But Jesus is calling us to, to operate according to a, a different kind of wisdom, uh, a counterintuitive wisdom that responds with love in the face of hatred. And it doesn't seem to make sense, and it requires walking in faith. So let's just hold that thought in our minds and, and then proceed to the gospel where we're called to, to act beyond what the world would, uh, would typically advise. And so in the final two of the six antitheses from the Sermon on the Mount, our Lord says, you have heard that it was said an eye for eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's kind of the, the uh, standard of justice in the Mosaic law. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your cheek, on your right cheek, turn the other to him as well. If uh, he wants to go to law with you over your tunic, give him his cloak as well, etc. Now, this is a very challenging um, uh, gospel, Scott, and uh, uh, many people ask, well, does this mean that I, I cannot uh, defend myself? You know, I have to let somebody rob my house and shoot my children or something like that. And actually, Scott, it's, I would argue this is not talking about self-defense because in the examples that our Lord gives, like uh, being struck on the cheek, which was an insult, or having someone sue you for the property, it's, it's impinging on your honor or impinging on your property. And our Lord is saying, you know, ignore these insults and return love. Uh, but he doesn't rule out self-defense. He doesn't, after all, say, well, if somebody runs at you with a knife, you know, let them slit your throat. Right. That's not the example. And especially it doesn't apply to self-defense when it comes to your wife and kids. Right. You know, you don't turn their cheek. Right. You know, right. You, you, you do whatever is necessary to prevent them from doing harm to those that God has placed under your authority. Right. You are the shepherd. They're the flock. Yeah. You don't lay their lives down or turn their cheeks. Yeah. I think that's a very important point to make, lest, yeah. the, lest this be misinterpreted. And it often is. It's often yeah. hijacked and used to kind of bring a false pacifism into Catholic morality that was never there. I mean, apart from a kind of monastic vocation, the radicality of this is not something that in any way subverts common sense and the natural law. Yeah, indeed. So this is uh, overlooking insults and returning love, you know, exactly. for that. And, and um, yeah. Uh, allowing one's property to, to be parted from one um, for the sake of gaining the friendship of the other person. And again, you heard that it was said, said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And he goes on to say, if you just love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect just as your heavenly father is perfect. So there again, Scott, uh, here we have that contrast between the worldly wisdom and perfection. Right. Uh, here it's described as perfection, but we know that our Lord is, is quoting with a variation from, uh, from Leviticus 19, be holy for I am holy. So perfection and holiness are conveying the same idea, uh, perhaps with some variation here. But what is it to be holy? Uh, this is something that you've been talking about a lot right. in, recent, uh, in recent months. Um, holiness, of course, is an attribute of God. It's that ineffable center of, of the divine being, as the, as the catechism describes. And uh, so to, to, holy, to be holy is to be godlike. And so the point of, of several of these readings, really, is that to be godlike is to go beyond the wisdom of the world. It's to, be, it's to go beyond justice. It's to exercise this graciousness this love, this mercy that we have experienced from God who does not hold our sins against us, but is overflowing in forgiveness. And we're to turn around then and uh, interact with others in that divine way. And uh, this is unique to our religion. Other religions don't conceive of God being this way. Uh, you know, I've had followers of Judaism or Islam, you know, scoff at this kind of ethic because they don't worship that kind of God. So you, you become like the God that you worship. And these readings are teaching us that our, our God is a God who defies typical human logic and calls us to an overflowing kindness um, that will be honored and, and, uh, and recompensed in the life to come because we're not just looking for uh, earthly reward. 